Hello and thank you for joining us on Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Lami Ali. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nca.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Now, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the reappointments of the entire executive management of the Nigeria Export Bank, Nexim. The reappointment follows the fact that the members of the current management of the bank were appointed on 10th April 2017, and their first five-year term is due to expire on 9th April 2022, as contained in a statement by Yunus Achanko Abdullahi, Special Advisor in Media and Communications to the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Those involved in the reappointment are Abba Bellu, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Bala Bellu, Executive Director, Corporate Services, and Stella Eruvu. Okotete, Executive Director, Business Development. The statement asks that their performance was approved as their tenure due to an end and were found to have performed well as exemplified by key achievements. The fault in commercial banks and federal agencies on the 1.2 trillion Naira unclaimed federal government funds are to refund to the government's coffers of phased legislative action. This was the resolution of the House at her committee investigating the issue after submissions by the affected banks and agencies. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Ad Aminu reports. The chief executives were on oath before the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee. The investigation is to dig deep, make analysis, and uncover the totality of unclaimed federal government funds owed by commercial banks and alleged infractions by the Central Bank of Nigeria. You are owing the federal government of Nigeria 239 million, 754, thousand hundred and twenty three point ninety four dollars there are six corporate accounts that don't have pvn and one individual account and all the accounts are blocked they don't have any transactions with city we've been trying our best to remit whatever is due to the government until 2016 where we had issue and we are compelled to remit. We have to go back, review the numbers, respond appropriately. Also under scrutiny are federal government intervention programs and failed projects. We decided as the House of Representatives to ensure that um, all this money that you are sitting on should be transferred to the federal government so that it will help our system. The Corporate Affairs Commission, Joint Admission Matriculation Board, First Bank and Union Bank are expected to remit various figures into the federal government coffers from the National Assembly, Ablai Haminu, NTNU. Determined to block revenue leakages in federal government-owned leased assets, the House at her committee set up to investigate the matter has visited the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, Abuja, to interface with concerned concessionaires. National Assembly correspondent Mobilaji Moribiring has the report. This oversight is part of efforts by the Ninth National Assembly to broaden revenue generation of government-owned leased assets. Interfacing with the committee are concessionaries made up of traders, vendors and tenants. 
The took turns to answer questions raised by the lawmakers, particularly on the allegation of non-compliance to payment of agreement. Your relationship with FAN as an agent of government, federal government for that matter, the House is here to investigate your dealings with them. So what do you have to tell us? My company is into aerogeographical survey. We are not hoeing. No, they are not. Even this... This year, rent, this is the proof of payment. We made some quite, um, payments, which I have the um, receipt copy with me. We have gotten all the information we need, and uh, we are now in a better pedestrian, both fund, the concessioners, and we. So sanctions will be applied in due course. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria made a plea to the legislators for a quick passage of laws that will ease the means of doing business as it affects concessionaries. There is need for the National Assembly to expedite the passage of the uh, Nigeria Customs uh, and Allied Matters uh, uh, law so that um, the duty-free uh, on arrival could be effected like every other country. The oversight is to unravel and block all financial leakages of government-owned lease asset to improve revenue generation in the country. In Abuja, Mobolaji, Moribiri, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Minister of Interior, Rao Farid Beshola, at a public hearing, has proposed a single board for Civil Defence Corps, Correctional, Federal Fire and Immigration Services to fill the existing gaps in the operations and activities of the four agencies in the country. National Assembly correspondent Dayo Gunshola reports. The Bill for an Act to Repeal Nigeria Immigration and Prison Services Board, Act of 2004, and enact the Civil Defence Corps. Correctional, Federal Fire and Immigration Services Board is an executive bill. These and five other bills are up for impulse from stakeholders. Structure and functions of the board under the extant act are not reflective of the current practices and the realities within the board and all the services being administered. We are appealing that the board should handle level eight and above why the rest level should be handled by service chiefs that put immigration, correctional, and fire. Leadership of the National Assembly believes that such legislations are capable of encouraging collaborations among the agencies. Two of the other bills relating to Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps intend to address the problem of overlapping mandates. These amendments will put the poor in the loop and help in tackling these challenges. The bill for an act to repeal Fire Service Act, when passed, will provide additional powers for the agency as first responder in emergency situations in the country. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. And away from the National Assembly, President Muhammad Buhari this Friday granted audience to the Chadian leader Muhammad Idris Debi Isno on a one-day private visit. This is coming barely 24 hours after playing host to his Nigerian counterpart Muhammad Bazoum. State House correspondent Adam Asambu brings us the details. Minister of Power Abubakar Aliyu leads federal government delegation to Germany to fast track implementation of presidential power initiative, which Siemens is the contracting firm. The Governor May Malabu on arrival was received by members of the Yobi State Executive Council, APC stalwarts, and stakeholders amid a rousing homecoming at Warsala, a boundary community between Yobi and Borno states. At the August 27th stage of Damatru, it was also a crowd of APC chieftains and loyalists from the Northeast region who converged on the arena to show their solidarity to the governor after successfully completing his national assignment. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, who saluted the courage, patriotism and resilience of Governor Buni for taking the ruling APC to an enviable position, also described him as an embodiment of reconciliation unity and proven integrity. Your Excellency, you have made us proud. We are proud, Yobians, because you have done everything and anything expected of you as the chairman of the caretaker and convention planning committee. Other speakers at the Grand Rally mounted Governor Police achievements, which include attracting big weeks from the 
opposition parties to the APC, coinciding agreed to members above all, placing the ruling APC on a solid foundation of winning future elections. Governor Ray Malabunu, while appreciating the love, solidarity, and support shown to him by people of the state and by extension Northeast region, says during his 18 month stewardship as chairman, APC Kiatika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, membership of the party risen from 11 million to 41.7 million. Featured at the event was the presentation of APC flags to some defectors, notable among them is the former PDP senator representing the South, Mohammed Hassan. Uh, apologies for the mix-up. That story is actually reports from the grand reception organized in Demarche Roots honor Memala Bunis' heroic 18-month stewardship of the ruling APC. Now, President Muhammad Buhari this Friday granted audience to the charging leader Muhammad Idris Deby Itno on a one-day private visit. This is coming barely 24 hours after playing host to his Nigerian counterpart Muhammad Bazoum, State House correspondent Adam Zumbu. Adamu Sambo reports. President Muhammad Idris Derby Idnu, who is the chairman of the Transitional Military Council of Chad, is visiting Nigeria for the second time since coming to power about 11 months ago. During his first visit, President Muhammad Idnu explained to President Muhammad Buhari circumstances surrounding his coming to power. Thanks, Nigeria, for the show of solidarity when his father died in the battlefield and promised sustained collaboration and cooperation between his country and Nigeria in the battle against terrorism and insurgency. No reason was given this time for the Chadian leader's visit by the presidency. The high-level one-on-one engagement between President Muhammad Buhari and his guests was held behind closed doors. Details of their discussions that lasted about one hour were not disclosed. On coming to power, the Chadian leader promised a return to democracy in 18 months and the readiness of his country to be guided by President Buhari and indeed Nigeria in the journey to constitutional order. In the meantime, the Nigerian leader also granted audience to the ambassador of the state of Qatar to Nigeria, Dr. Ali bin Ghanim al Hajri. The envoy delivered to President Muhammad Buhari a special message from the Qatari monarch Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, from the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Now, the federal government targets September this year for the delivery of mobile substations and transformers to boost electricity supply and stabilize the greed. Minister of Power Abubakar Ali revealed this in Germany during a visit to Siemens Energy Factories. Joshua Jitu reports. Our Abubakar Aliyu leads federal government delegation to Germany to fast track implementation of presidential power initiative, which Siemens is the contracting firm. The project is to rehabilitate and expand the transmission arm of electricity value chain to wield 25,000 megawatts of electricity by the year 2025. Part of the deal is for Siemens to manufacture more mobile substations and transformers for Nigeria and the visit of the power minister is to assess progress made in the manufacturing of the power infrastructure. We had a very, very interactive uh, sessions with them, which uh, was very fruitful and the, and the promise was that they are going to, to work with this timeline. I'm happy that the Honorable Minister for Power uh, is here because his presence here today underscores the importance that the Nigerian government and the minister uh, place on this presidential power initiative. September this year is the target set by the federal government for Siemens to deliver the mobile substations and transformers. There are expectations that the implementation of the Presidential Power Initiative will boost capacity of transmission to increase supply nationwide. Joshua Ojitu, NTA News. It's now time to join Kendi in our legal studio for more reports from the Center of Excellence. Hello, Kendi. It's over to you. Hello, Lami. Glad to have you join us in Lagos. 
tolling of vehicles will commence along the Lekki Ikui Link Bridge on the 15th of April as the newly installed equipment are put to test run. Managing Director Lekki Concession Company Limited, Yomi Omomuwasan, said robust discussion is still ongoing with stakeholders on the need to resume operations. Abola De Salami has a situation report. At yes, 7 a.m., the Lekki Ikui Link Bridge corridor was surrounded by the presence of every security personnel to forestall any attempt to cause civil unrest by any person or group of persons under the guise of protest. As vehicles exiting Ikoi through the bridge into Lekki added seamless, same applied to those making their way from end of Bodilon to Lekki Phase 1. The Lekki Ikoi Link Bridge, after 18 months of being out of commercial operation as a result of the NSAS protest that led to the destruction of some of their properties. Today, the bridge has begun test running of their newly installed equipment. This, the company said, will go for two weeks. We are now seeing vehicular passages. We will know what our system is actually saying, whether it is as efficient as we have uh, seen it on the paper, on the non-life data. That is what we mean by testing. It also means that within this period of 15 days, we are not going to collect money from any motorist to make a passage on the bridge. Reacting to news making the round on the disposition of some residents to the commencement of tolling of vehicles around the access, the managing director said several mutual discussions have been reached, while further engagement with stakeholders is still ongoing. The period will enable us to engage further so that we can arrive at a situation that will be beneficial, mutually beneficial to everybody. However, before the expiration of the two weeks window set, motorists will apply the toll gates and update their electronic cards as payment of cash is not allowed. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. The Nigeria Customs Service is going a step further in its anti-smuggling and revenue generation drive by bringing on board more support staff to achieve its mandate. Here is the report. The three-hour mandate of the current leadership of the Nigeria Customs Service, which is reform, restructure and raise revenue, is coming to play in the discharge of duties of officers and men of the Nigeria Customs Service. This is evidence in the inclusion of professionals on the service who will in various capacities support the officers at the border lines. We have taught them everything they need to learn for them to succeed wherever they find themselves, be it uh, uh, at the border, doing the anti-smuggling anti activities, or in the ports, doing their job. We, are pre we have prepared them and we believe they are going to uh, contribute a lot to the Nigeria Customs Service. In less than three months, um, from the parade, the conduct, discipline, high level of integrity, you can see that um, the sky is their limit, that the future of customs. Ibrahim Dahiru is a dentist and one of the newly commissioned cadet officers. Though directly not at the front line, he believes the service will enhance the oppression of other officers and men in preserving the security of the nation, facilitating trade and generating more revenue for the nation. Since we are the first two to be recruited in the history of the Nigerian Customs as a dental surgeon, to see that uh, those cases that we've been hearing from one or two people that uh, have been referred from the hospital with uh, help of the management and then facilities, we will be, we'll be able to uh, carry out those procedures or those uh, treatment processes in the uh, customs clinics or custom hospitals. The 415 cadet officers say they employ an integrity and discipline as their watchword. And that's our contribution from Lagos. Potakot is our next stop on Nationwide. Gabriel is standing by with more stories there after this break. But before that break, we'd like to remind you to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now, and on Instagram at NTA Network for update. Photocop Network Center. 
the Nigerian Immigration Service is adopting new strategies to further strengthen the country's borders against entry or exit by persons without valid travel documents. Acting Control General of Immigration, Issa Jere Idris, during a tour of formation in Akwaibam State, said the service is prepared to ensure that only authorized routes are assessed by travelers. Clement Barakui reports. We, we see any strange face that we cannot identify them, we report them, to, we report such face to them. Even our boys who are operating body doesn't interfere with the immigration uh, activity. Oron and Ibaka are border communities in Akwaibom State, providing access to about four African countries, including Cameroon, Mali, and Ghana. This underscores the importance of the visit by the Acting Controller General of Immigration to the two control posts where he inspected facilities with a view to improving on them for effective border security. This is my the first border I'm visiting, yeah, finding to see the for myself, and I've seen a lot. Since 1970, when the border was created, no CG has been set. I'm here. We are the first CG to visit the border, and I've seen. The officers are doing well, but they require a lot of logistics. The use of technology in checking movement in and out of the country, according to the Acting Comptroller General, is the next way to go. So that is the next uh, level we are going, to use ICT as a tool to be able to monitor our borders. The Acting Comptroller General had earlier paid a casi visit to the Deputy Governor Moses Epo, during which the Deputy Governor assured the Nigeria Immigration Service of the state government's continued partnership. In Uyo, Clement Barakui, NTA News. Our traditional ruler in River State, Dr. Eze Chris Akani, who is also a university don, has unveiled two books explaining the historical perspectives of oil and gas in the Niger Delta region and the culture of Okuta clan amongst the Ikwere people. Robinson Daratede has details of this. The two books written by Dr. Chris Sakani of Ignatius Ajuri University of Education, River State, are the Nigerian state and oil, Okuta hegemony, culture and politics among the Ikwere people of the Niger Delta. The Nigerian state and oil, having seven chapters and 381 pages, corrects wrong perceptions about the politics and exploration of oil in the Niger Delta, as reviewed by Professor Prince Mon. While the second book, with seven chapters and 403 pages, examines the culture and practice of the Okuta clan among the Ikwere people, reviewed by Professor Emmanuel Okemini. He has called uh, his thesis. It has need for a paradigm shift, for the leadership to be more responsible. Chairman of the event, Professor Stephen Okodudo, represented, and other speakers viewed the books as timely, not just for the academic alone, but for anyone who wants to enrich his knowledge about the Niger Delta region. We know why it has become more than a desideratum for the AZ to have spared time to write the two books. For a traditional ruler to also have time, not only to teach, but to write books, I think it is something which is the main thing. For Dr. Chris Akani, the books are product of his long-time desire to address the issues of agitations in the Niger Delta, occasioned by oil explorations, as well as to preserve the historical heritage of the Kwele people. Those who have inherited political power and in charge of distribution of our resources are the people of cheating us. Not that it is the final history of Rumo Buddha, but it will serve as a firm foundation for further studies, further research. I point was the unfailing of the two books by the dignitaries, among whom was the Director General of NTA, represented by the Zona Director, NTA Potako, Bosede Adebayo. In Portacourt, Robinson, Deratayde, NTA News. And as our package from Portacourt, Nationwide continues with Lamin. Thank you, Gabriel. The Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar, has called on Muslims to look for the new moon of Ramadan 1443 after Hijra on Friday, 1st April 2022, equivalent to 29th of Shaban. This was contained in a statement signed by the Secretary Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council of Sokoto, Yahya Muhammad Boi. 
The cyclone should be reported through the following numbers 0803 7100 0706-7416900 0806-6300-3077 0803-614-9757 0803-596-5322 and 0803-594-5903. Now, 1st of April every year is regarded as April Fool's Day. And on this day, harmless and funny pranks are pulled to make the subjects believe without a clue. In this report, Elizabeth Omori reports on the history of the age-long tradition. Pregnant. Pregnant? How fun do we have this? What? It's a prank. The, ca the camera's there. You know what? <laughs> it's a prank. One of the funniest pranks ever. It's April 1. The day has been celebrated for several centuries by different cultures. Though its exact origin remains shrouded in mystery, April Fool's Day tradition includes plain horses, oftentimes yelling, April Fool. I wake up in the morning, somebody just came and told me, I both want to see me immediately. Before I know, I bought one to went out and now told me that's a prayer. Food. You become afraid and all of that are here, but well, at the end of it all, we have to laugh it off. Some historians speculate that April Fool's Day dates back 1582, when France switched from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, as called for by the Council of Trent in 1563. In the Julian calendar, the year began with spring equinox around April 1, while some fall for the pranks. Others catch the glimpse before they do. There are many people um, that are better than me are all gone, but I'm still alive today. This is a new month. We thank God. We, we hope for the better, that tomorrow will be better than yesterday. After waking up, you know, yes, there is a greatness. you looking forward to a particular goal. You have life for you to look forward to it. Well, life is fun every day. Live the best of it. Make an impact every day. Because each day, is a blessing in Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. In a quest to face our traditional pen and paper filing of court processes and embracing the ICT, the Federal Capital Territory High Court has inaugurated electronic affidavit registry management system. This new automation will enable the courts to provide improved service delivery to citizens and promote speedy dispensation of justice. The affidavit is accessible. It is now possible to apply for an affidavit from anywhere in the world and receive timely response from our desk officers. We've started something which will make a big difference to the country, and I only pray, sir, that you help us push it to make it happen. We have given a solution that is credible and also accessible at the same time to the three parties that are necessary involved uh, in the process of the affidavit. The system will also receive time, resources and pinpoint affidavits that are fake. Now, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Musa Bello, says the administration has no plan to shut down Garuki Hospital, contrary to rumours making the rounds in some sections of the media. The minister gave this clarification when he received the executive members of the Nigeria Medical Association, who paid him a courtesy visit in Abuja. Inouye Yakubu reports. The Garuki District Hospital entered into a 15-year concession agreement between the FCT administration and the Nisa Medical Group on the management of the hospital. This agreement expires on the 31st of March 2022. FCT Minister Mohammed Musa Bellu noted that contrary to rumors making the rounds, the administration has no plan to disrupt the operations of the hospital following the expiration of the 15-year concession agreement. The hospital is not going to be closed down. It will continue as a going concern. Uh, and then the, the agreement is not being terminated. It is just going to die a natural 
it, it is not going to expire. And once it expires, there has to be something that will come and take it. But I assure you that this hospital will continue. Leader of the delegation and chairman of Nigeria Medical Association, Dr. Enema Job Amodu, expressed concern over FCTA's alleged decision to terminate the concession agreement of the hospital with Nisa Medical Group. If for other reasons this is the way to go, you may wish to consider the doctors and other healthcare workers working there with a the view of retaining their services and to complete their programs such as residency training and internship. The burden of running health facilities by the government is increasingly tasking. He also reaffirmed NMA's commitment to partnering the FCT administration in providing quality healthcare services to the residents. Onoze Yakubu, NT News. Now, in furtherance of efforts to maximize efficiency in livestock production, the federal government has flagged off mass vaccination of cattle with a view to scaling up the productivity and profitability of the livestock business. Johannes Hassan reports that millions of doses of vaccines are being distributed across the country as part of broader economic empowerment drive of the government. A moment of excitement as livestock farmers cite veterinary officers in their locality. Hosseini Isa, who has been a pastoralist all his life, said before the enlightenment on the vaccine administration, he was unaware of its benefit to his animals. The flag of ceremony of the free mass transborder vaccination in Meigatari is informed by its large market of livestock and close proximity to Niger Republic. It will become an annual thing so that we'll be able to get good quality meat, healthy animals, and then we'll be able to meet international standards. Animal health is important to humans because we consume these animals and this has to do with transboundary, which by the animal crops from Niger Republic to Nigeria. It's a very good effort and uh, we only need to uh, request for more synergy. The mass vaccination on transboundary animal diseases flagged up by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development aims to upgrade the production capacity of indigenous livestock and as well bring about significant economic trade and food security in the country. Headers like Husseini, who are full of gratitude to the federal government for vaccinating their livestock, are going home with the hope of improved productivity. In Kanu, Johannes Asa, NTA News. We now move to Makudi to join Susan for more reports on Nationwide. The federal government has enlisted 690 Benue youths across the 23 local government areas for vocational skills acquisition in 36 thematic areas. This was highlighted during the flag off of a youth transformation program of the Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck, performed by Governor Samuel Otum in Makudi. Charles Abba reports. The 690 youths engaged for the training consist of 10% of those physically challenged, 30% of women, and 60% of those that are energetic. Out of the 36 skills acquisition platforms, Amos Luben chose to go for event planning, while Anastasia Usha settled for fish farming. Very marketable. Because a lot of weddings are happening out Fish farming is part of agriculture and it's marketable. Benway State Governor Samuel Oton, represented by the Secretary of the State Government, Professor Tony Ijoho, who flagged up the Hyperdeck Youth Transformation Program, appreciated the federal government for taking close to 700 youths out the streets of Benway. As the participants, you are now ambassadors of Benway State in this program. We want you to do all you can to take, take this serious, take this serious project. Make sure that there's hundred percent attendance. That we now encourage Africa to do more for the state. Managing director, Hyperdeck, Abubakar Sadiq Yewa. The chairman, Joseph Tefa Itiav, and the new approach coordinator, Lillian Omekara. 
emphasize that Hyperdeck is a recent creation that has achieved over 90% of its mandate by intervening in areas of flooding, natural disasters, ecological measures, settlement of displaced persons, and many more. The Commission donated over 50 life jackets for those in riverine areas and 10 motorcycles for use in monitoring security situation within the hyperdeck communities. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. Opinion leaders in Benue State have appealed for renewed peace between Egba and Oloba communities of Agatu local government area of the state. They made the call during the rebirth of Agatu Fishing Festival, which is a demonstration of an end to the age-long violent conflict between the two communities. Correspondent Moses Ajau Ode reports that the festival is at the instance of the Benue State Governor, who was represented by his deputy, Benson Abonu. After several failed attempts of bringing to an end the long violent conflict between the Egba and all of our communities of Agatu local government area of Benue State, peace has returned as a center for humanitarian dialogue has succeeded in bringing the seemingly elusive peace. Today we are witnessing that signing of that agreement by fishing together with the Logba and we said never again should we carry a gun to kill one another. Peace at the other ground, under the water, under the mud there. They will fish and they will catch fish. To demonstrate the new found unity, the two communities had a joint fishing festival on the pond which had been a source of hostility among the neighboring communities who are predominantly farmers and fishermen. Close to 50 years, these communities had lived in violent clashes over ownership of this fish pond that had led to the killings of innocent lives and destruction of property. As a result, meaningful activities could not take place as markets and schools remained closed. But all those changed with the mapping of the Agatu Natural Resources by the Center for Humanitarian Dialogue in 2021 and the subsequent resolutions of both communities to embrace peace. So as an organization, the Center for Humanitarian Dialogue is very happy that uh, we have engaged the community. By this resolution, the fish pond is now open for communal fishing festival among all the 22 clans of Agatu extraction of the Inoma nation. Age long Idoma tradition has been that when you are fishing from a pond like this, everybody partakes. Everybody, even people from neighboring villages, they come there and they partake. And whatever catch they make, they share. And so we've made it clear to them that in the name of peace, let them fish this pond together. To a non native, at first sight, the Agatu fishing pond appears like an ordinary machine land, but the people say fish dwell underneath the marsh. Moses Ajau Udi, Antinous. And that's it from Makudi Nationwide continues with comfort in Enugu after this break. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Enugu Network Center. The Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 13 in Upu, Dulu Kofia, comprising of Fanam Brian Enugu State, Omar Musa Muri, has reassured people under the command of adequate security reform system that will combat crime within the Southeast geopolitical zone. He stated this during his familiarization visit to Enugu State. Okechuku Agubama has details of this report. That showcases his readiness to inform the command on some principles on the security architecture to find crimes within the state. The Assistant Inspector General of Police of the Anambra and Enugu State Command, Omar Mori, recalled the need to boost the morale of the security agents to combat crime. So that I'll be able to talk to my men, so that we have to be on the same pace with a view to upgrading security in Enugu State Command and the entire South East Command. He added that the visit is to map out necessary strategies to improve the staff welfare. I assure you, people of Enugu State and Southeast in Itachi will celebrate Easter without any problem. 
the commissioner of police, Enugu State Command, Lawa Abubakar, emphasized that the familiarization tour of the duty and lecture parade of officers and men of the command is apt. We were able to arrest the total number of 207 suspects with different criminal offenses the suspects have committed. The event attracted officers and men of the command within the state. In Enugu, Okechuku, Akobama, NTA News. For now, embracing genetically modified organisms was an uphill task due to divergent information about safety. Nigeria's approval of genetic cowpea and cotton has, however, boosted hopes for technology in Nigeria and across Africa to sensitize stakeholders on biosafety and biotechnology in the Southeast. An open forum on agricultural biotechnology and programs for biosafety systems has held in Enugu. Mina Adobe Okobasi reports. Sensitization workshop is aimed at implementing a proactive policy in the area of biotechnology, promote biotech and biosafety, as well as discuss opportunities in biotechnology. The workshop had facilitators across Africa to discuss hybrid expose and benefits inherent in genetically modified organisms, GMO. You can use biotechnological tools to improve the resistance to the effect of heat and lack of water so that they can survive in adverse conditions. Now, as scientists, we want to make sure that what we give out to the society, what we sell in the market, are safe. According to the researchers, genetically modified organisms, GMOs, are intended to cut down on cost of food production associated with farming and to ensure food security. Uh, approvals have been given for genetically modified crops. Uh, we felt partnering with the National Biosafety Management Agency, this is a new technology. Before you put your hands to buy it, it is good that we sensitize people. The function of the agency is basically put in this administrative and regulatory measure mechanisms to ensure that the application of modern technology is safe. The theme of the Southeast Sensitization Workshop is the role of biosafety regulation and modern biotechnology towards realizing economic diversification in Nigeria. In Enugu, Mina Adobe Kobosi, NT News. And that was our contribution from Enugu is back to Lambi in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Comforts. Now, the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation as a seminar held in Abuja has redefined the relationship between the benefiting entities. But Nigeria is still pushing for more cooperation in the areas of housing, energy, education and security. Elizabeth Omori reports. This relationship dates back 1971 and both have continued to enjoy smooth and steady development. Maintenance of this harmonious cooperation is a reason for this meeting to close the gaps in infrastructural deficits. Uphold non-interference in international affairs and support multilateralism and democracy in the international relations to promote our win-win cooperation. Essentially, we have looked at uh, the ways our relationships have been. So the china nigeria relations, we want, like say, to go beyond what this government to government. And now also to people to people, there are advantages out there that the ordinary Nigerian is supposed to take. And then in the areas of trade and investment, people need to know what to do exactly. As a member of the Belt and Road Initiative, Nigeria discussions say must scale up industrialization process that will facilitate investments in housing, energy, education, and security. The Chinese way is to adopt an independent way, the internationalization of the renminbi. So if in the interest of Africa, Nigeria, and China, we're going to engage in financial cooperation, that will actually boost our cooperative independence in economic cooperation. Nigeria is one of the fastest growing economies in sub-Saharan Africa. Panelists suggest should strengthen her export base for inclusive growth. Elizabeth Omori, NT News.
Now, Director General Nigerian Television Authority, Malam Yaakobu Ibn Mohammed, says engaging media practitioners in addressing security challenges in the country will help in providing accurate information, halts fake news and motivate security agencies in the discharge of their mandate. The Director General said this in a lecture at Armed Forces Command in South College, Jaji, Kaduna State. Suleiman Rigachikung has the story. As complex and dynamic the challenge of terrorism, banditry and agitation, the approach to surmount this requires multifaceted approach involving critical stakeholders. One of the platforms for stakeholders' engagement, bringing together security services and the media for truthful and objective discussion on variant national security issues, is exercise has view of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College Jaji. Our interactions with the media is increasing. Presenting a paper to participants on the topic, addressing security imperatives in Nigeria, the role of the media, represented by the Zonal Director NTA Kaduna Network Center, Hamza Musa Makaripi. Director General Nigerian Television Authority, Malam Yakub Ibn Muhammad said, no matter the circumstances, Nigerian media must be patriotic, objective, and unifying. No matter the odds, no matter the difficulties we see in this country, no matter the challenges, the Nigerian Television Authority stands as a unifier. We want to bring unity to Nigerian people. We want to see why Nigeria should be one country. During a question and answer session, the Director General emphasized the need for mutual respect, timely alertness on security breach between security agencies and the media for proper information dissemination to the public. Suleyman Rigachikung, NTA News. The National Orientation Agency, NOA, is working to ensure an inclusive crusade in the fight against drug abuse and other forms of violent crimes as the agency takes the campaign to Abuja School of the Deaf, Kuji, FCT. Kenneth Nanim reports. This category of students have hearing impairment, but that is not in any way an impediment from engaging them for societal development and to ensure no one takes advantage of their situation to abuse their fundamental rights. It therefore becomes imperative to equip them with the required information on the dangers of drug abuse, gender-based violence, and other forms of social vices. They too are citizens of Nigeria that must imbibe the values and the ethics as laid down for us in the national constitution. We want to catch them young now so that they will know what drug is all about, the effects, what drug abuse is all about, the consequences. Patromi James is a former student of Abuja School of the Deaf, now working with the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, and he is part of the crusade and also motivating other students to be optimistic in pursuing their ambitions. But when they finish from primary school here, they should invest in further and think of what they can do to be hardworking, to to make effort to work hard to get jobs like him. The students and the teachers are appreciative of the gesture and urge the government and good spirited organizations and individuals to come to their aid. Said that when she sees someone that wants to uh, abuse her, she will expose the person. They train us to not join bad gang and they train us and advise us to not work with bus friends. They enlisted operational vehicles for adequate monitoring of students and steady power supply as priority needs for their well-being. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. And that does it on Nationwide. We thank you for watching. Join us at 7 and 9 for more reports. Remember, the campaign against rape and rapists is still on. Join the NTA to read Society of this menace. Thank you for watching.